Wakey, wakey, to a new day, and today is my birthday. The yellow balloon's up in the sky, which means it's time to go outside. It's my birthday. Hello, yay! I just can't wait to see what's going to happen with this movie. It's a great opportunity for a birthday pig. Pig, okay. Um. <laughs> It's my birthday and I'm a little drunk and I have some ideas that I, I wanted to say about this new Godzilla movie that's going to come next year. This is not written. These are moderately organized thoughts. Something I just kind of thought about is that um, given, so for those who don't know, there's very little information about this movie yet, given that it's a whole year, well, uh, 51 weeks away. Um, we do know that Takashi Yamazaki is directing it, thank God, finally, about fucking time. Dude's been waiting since 2007 to get a chance. Um, and I, you know what? I, I was, when I first heard that Hideaki Anno was going to direct the new one, when, I mean, back when Shin Godzilla was announced, I was floored because... I mean, I knew of Evangelon, but I didn't know, is it Evangelon or even? I don't care. Um, like before, like I knew of it, but I didn't know who he was. So um, I had to find out from like articles that he was the guy who did Evangelon. So, um, and I was like, why? I mean, you know, I guess it's sort of applicable. He, They're both like, very popular well-selling monster franchises so it makes sense but like one of them is animated and the other is tokusatsu and then one of them is about interpersonal drama and the other is about civilization and anti-war and anti-pollution and all these big bigger issues um so it didn't really make a lot i mean that's not i'm not saying anything about the movie what i'm saying is that like at the time I thought for sure Takashi Yamazaki was like a shoo-in for the next Godzilla movie. Like, I I would have bet almost, well, I mean, I don't bet, but if I if I was the kind of person who, who was betting, I would have betted whatever on it because the thought of literally anyone else in the world making the next Godzilla movie who wasn't Takashi Yamazaki sounded utterly alien and unintelligible to me. So I was completely baffled and blindsided when, when they did Hinayaki Anno. Not so much by Shinji Higuchi, but yeah, you know, I mean, just like, what are you, like, what are you doing? So um, it's like about time is what I'm saying. And one of the reasons um, why is because even though Always 2 isn't like a God, I mean, Godzilla's in it, but it's not like a Godzilla movie. But that movie is just about like a family and it's a period piece set in the, sh the Showa era. And that's like, that's a Honda movie. <laughs> and it's like, this guy is like, I'm not going so far as to say he's like the reincarnation of Honda or anything, but his style is like so in lockstep with Honda and also at the same time he's like this company man that keeps pushing out all of these anime adaptations and stuff and like you know I don't I don't really pay attention to that sort of thing but as far as I'm aware he's been holding it down with these big anchors for Toho and it's like he's knocking these anchors out of the park he he has this style that's really amenable to like a Honda-esque Godzilla movie and he hasn't done a proper Godzilla movie yet it's like what the hell are you waiting for any and why else so um yeah what was the point I was making just a minute ago right 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 okay so this the stuff we know so we know that Yamazaki is the director the other thing we know is the time period or at least one of the time periods um so if you haven't heard the situation behind this movie was that earlier in the year, there was a casting call on some sort of, I don't, I don't know the details of it. It was some sort of app or something 
for, for Toho or Godzilla or something like that. And it was for extras in a Toho monster movie. And the, the parts for the extras, um, it was specified to wear something. It specified the time period, you know, for, for the, the extras to come in, in costume or something. And the time period was uh, immediately after World War II but before the show of 30s, uh, and which, how is, how I initially heard, I initially heard it was the show of 20s after World War One, which would mean like 46 to, to 54, um, which would have led up to the time period of Godzilla, but assuming it was the early 20s, uh, in, because it was right after the war, um, it would have been before the original Godzilla, which would be before the the Lucky Dragon number five thing. And of course, Toho, I mean, they do make other movies with monsters in them, but those movies are adaptations. So they made a Monster Hunter movie, and before that they made two Attack on Titan movies. And like, you like I've I've seen articles for those on Wikizilla. Like I think they list monster stats for them on Toho Kingdom. Like yes, they're Toho monster movies that don't have Godzilla in them. But like Toho doesn't hasn't made a Toho monster movie without Godzilla in it within the same context as what a Godzilla fan might think of that notion since. Well, really since the late 90s. Um, technically, the Caesar X movie had the Gotingo in it and is therefore connected to the Toho multiverse kind of situation. Also, uh, Professor Chujo showed up in one of the, in the first 12 episode arc of Ground Caesars. And they also have Mazer tanks. So between all that stuff, uh, the Chosation universe is in some way connected to the Toho multiverse somehow. Um, but, um, they, but they haven't made a movie with like a feature length. I mean, okay, so the Cesar X movie is feature length, but it's barely over the minimum, which is like 45 minutes or something. So it's like an hour or 70 minutes long, I think. No, it's, I think it's like actually 50 minutes long. I don't, I don't remember. I haven't seen it in a while, but the point is they don't, the whole thing where every movie they pop out a Godzilla movie and another non-Godzilla Toho monster movie, like they did in the sixties, that has been dead for a long time. That's been dead since the Showa era. So when, um, producers at Toho start talking about this idea of, uh, we're going to do a, a world of Godzilla sort of thing. What they're talking about is a return to that sort of idea. And so having, now that they have sound bites to that effect on record and publicity and interviews and things, it is reasonably or reasonable to think that when Toho puts out a casting call for a Toho monster movie featuring extras dressed in in a period maybe right up to the time of Godzilla or or probably before it, um, that it might not necessarily be a Godzilla movie, but the safe money was always on Godzilla. And, it, you know, I, I you got to take that news with a pinch of salt, but I think the moment that they said they called the thing blockbuster monster movie from Toho directed by Takashi fucking Yamazaki, I think we all knew and uh, we were all right. So that's the situation. As, as far as the time, uh, the time period is concerned, uh, my initial hearing about it was too broad. It turns out that the subsequent I don't know reports or like better translation of of the of the press release for the casting call or whatever has narrowed it down to any time between 1945 and 1947 which I will from here on out call 1946 
for the uh, ease of everyone. So 1946, so like, you know, Godzilla was, was post-occupation. This is post-war in the middle of occupation. So this is the era immediately before Godzilla and also before um, Lucky Dragon number five. So this is really interesting. Now there are, there is the possibility that this time period does not represent the entirety of the film, but rather uh, like a prologue of sorts, um, which that's a very real possibility. Um, it could be that the film has some kind of like establishment of the history of Japan since the nuclear age, which would be, I mean, if you're going to do a Godzilla movie and focus it on bomb and stuff like that, uh, an establishing prologue of some sort about the immediate after effects of the war and that kind of thing is a pretty reasonable and smart thing to do. Um, to establish a setting and to establish a mood and to establish your themes. Um, and then you can flash forward until 54 and, and do that. Or even just say, this is what life was like before the first Godzilla movie. Put the first Godzilla movie in your continuity and branch off into a new branch of the 54 continuity family. You know, it works. So having part of the movie set in 1946 does not mean that this is a Godzilla movie set before the Lucky Dragon number five incident. However, there isn't any evidence to say otherwise at the moment. So it is very possible that what we are dealing with is a Godzilla that appeared before the Castle Bravo test, um, which for those of you paying attention, would probably mean that this Godzilla is somehow the result of the actual offensive use, the only offensive use of nuclear weapons ever in history. Meaning instead of a nuclear test out in the Pacific, this Godzilla would be a product of Hir Hiroshima and Nagasaki, a fat man and or little boy. Um, which would be huge. That would be, it's, it's a new angle, but it's a consistent angle. Um, like in a way that even Shin Godzilla was straying a little bit too far from. I mean, Shin Godzilla wasn't per se a, a movie about nuclear energy in a direct way. It, it was a 311 movie. So it was about the the Fukushima power plant disaster. But more than that, it was about the response by the government to 311 and the various crises. So um, it, it, it definitely has an element of Fukushima. And of course, Godzilla in that movie is the creation not of a nuclear test, but of nuclear waste. Um, so it's obviously ingrained as part of the character. He wouldn't be Godzilla if that wasn't involved. So, you know, that's, that's there. But um, this is like really close to home. And you know, the thing about Godzilla, the original one, is that like, there were limits during the occupation about the kind of topics that Japanese films could even broach. And so the reason that a lot of people have this like kind of misinformed uh, con conceptualization of Godzilla as being about Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and they are, but they are a direct response to Castle Bravo and the situation about them and the irradiated fish and all that kind of stuff. And it's about other things. It's, it's about the war. It's about the bombs from the war. It's about the firebombing previous to the nuclear bombs. But uh, it, was a, it was a direct response to the zeitgeist at the time. And, and the reason that Godzilla only came out when it did is because it came out as soon as a movie like that was even able to be made in the first place. Because 
during the occupation, there were restrictions on, on that sort of thing. So the, the fact that Godzilla is about the latest in, what a miserable thing to say, just the latest in a long string of nuclear tragedies this fucking country has had to deal with in like nine years. Fucking ridiculous. Anyway, so Godzilla was born in in that period, but he was born at like the tail end of that period. So um, now is about, I mean, to be fair, we could have done it at any other point in time, um, probably after the 60s up until, I mean, they wouldn't have done it in the 70s, so that wouldn't have happened. Um, then the Cold War was a thing, so like, you know, the second Cold War, as it were, so the 80s weren't going to go back in time, you know, and then 311 happened, and then, so there's all this stuff, so really, while it, technically they could have made this movie at any point in time before now, we are in a unique position in history to look back on this period with and the perspective of it being history, like, you really for some historical events you really need to get some distance from it to really see what kind of an impact it had as a historical event as opposed to something that you live through at the time and so this godzilla movie being a a take on the only offensive use of nuclear weapons in history um is something that we are in a unique position to make at this point not only in history, but in the franchise, there is this opening for it. And um, that's really fucking interesting and really cool. And there is limitless potential in that. I have heard some people, listen, my finger is far removed from the pulse of like people who call themselves Godzilla fans nowadays. I know almost nothing about anything. The the big thing that turned me off is when the Hollywood movie came out and they were like, oh, this is not two hours of a black screen. We love this, uh, which is objectively false. And then Shin Godzilla came out and they said, oh, there are new ideas. We hate this. And I was like, well, that's a bad take. And then the anime trilogy came out and they were like, but he doesn't fight the monsters, which is objectively wrong <laughs> he, does, he does he fights Mechagodzilla and Gang King Ghidorah in the next one that's what happens in the movie if you don't believe me you can you can watch yeah, they're on Netflix you can watch them yourself don't you don't have to take my word for it they're they're there he fights them so I I don't I find it really difficult to engage with that sort of thing and I don't really know like I, like, I, ju I just don't talk to people like that. I'm not on Rodan's Roost anymore. I don't know. It's, my finger's off the pulse. So, but, so when I say I've heard something, I'm not trying to say it. it's indicative of what people are saying about it. I'm just, of the very limited things that I've heard, one of the things I've heard is that people are nicknaming it Godzilla Zero, which I think is a really cool name. And I kind of hope that they go with that. Fun fact. Uh, Dracula Untold, you know, that first attempt at the Dark Universe situation. Um, in Japan, that was called Dracula Zero, which is an infinitely cooler name. Unfortunately, it does not fix the problems that that movie has where Dracula is a loving family man with a British accent played by an elf. Uh, but, you know, it's a it's a cool title. So, um, yeah, that's what I think about the two bits of information, the only bits of information we have. I mean, we have, we know that it's being produced by like a subsidiary of a subsidiary of Toho or something. I, I'm not really clear on the details. I, I don't really care. As long as the Toho logo is up at the beginning, I, it actually... Not that this really diminishes my love for any of them, but the fact that the last three Godzilla movies started with the Toho animation logo instead of the classic Toho logo that's been on the first 29 movies kind of upset me a little bit. I mean, it doesn't 
on on the scale of things that matter and how much they matter, it is so low down on that list. But also at the same time, it's like, you know, come on. <laughs> so, you know, it, it, I, as long as I get to see that logo in, I'm happy. That's all I care about. If you do four movies, four Godzilla movies in a row that doesn't have the Toho logo, it's like, you know, what are you doing? At that point, it's kind of like, like I understood it for the animes, but like, you know, come on. One thing about the movie that we don't necessarily know for certain, but it's we pretty much do know, is that it's not going to be a sequel to Shin Godzilla or a prequel. It's it's not gonna it's not a Shin Godzilla movie. It's it's gonna be its own thing, and um, you can still hold out hope if you want to. There is reasonable doubt to say that this might be a related to Shin Godzilla. That's fine. There isn't anything to disprove that opinion as of yet. However, um, I think that's clutching at straws, and I think instead of worrying about that sort of thing, we should be worrying about what we do know and what it could be based on that. And what we do know doesn't suggest a Shin Godzilla 2. Um, rather, it suggests yet another reboot of the series, and one that will, if the whole movie is set in the late 40s then or 1946 as I said I was going to say from here on out and then immediately didn't do that um then that would mean uh that you know this is a new Godzilla and um it would probably be very tonally and thematically inappropriate to have this be a movie where Godzilla fights another monster. Um, and that's a little interesting because it would be the third time in the past six years that that's happened. Um, so the last time that happened was the second time in a row. So you, you have the original Godzilla film where he doesn't fight an opponent at all because it you know it was it was about Godzilla and then they in the sequel they introduced that that trope of having him fight another monster and then it was in every other movie that was the thing every movie you give him a new monster to fight and then when they did that first initial timeline reboot with Return of Godzilla they wiped the sake clean and we said this is just a Godzilla movie however Return of Godzilla still had him fight the Super X, which is not, I mean, I, I would make a case. I could argue for the Super X being a monster, but that's like a different discussion. Um, but for, from the layman's perspective, it's not a monster. It's, but it is still an opponent. Godzilla fights the Super X one-on-one. -on -one. So in what the film is telling us is that Godzilla and the Super X are evenly matched and that's like the impression. And then how the battle goes from there, like the, t the tension exists within those scenes because it wants the audience to assume that the two are evenly matched. So it is presenting Godzilla versus the Super X in the same way that another film would present Godzilla versus another monster. Um, but technically we can say, okay, that's the second time Godzilla hasn't fought an opponent. It, it's it's the second time he hasn't fought another monster. He did technically fight an opponent, whatever. So it isn't until 30 years later, 32 years later, that, that you get the first time, or the third time, that you get like a solo Godzilla movie. Uh, not really, but he like he doesn't fight another monster. And this time he doesn't even have a singular opponent at all. He fights a bunch of drones and some trains. Like, that's it. And, and you know, that makes sense. Um, it's... There seems to be this roughly 30 year cycle now because it, it's happened twice. And then the very next movie is the exact same thing. Godzilla doesn't have a monster. There are other, again, just as in the last two times, there are other monsters in the movie. However, he doesn't fight one as his primary antagonist. And that's kind of a lot that I, I feel like that's weird, especially in this era where the Hollywood movies are culturating this like 
bro culture of ma monster fights it seems it's definitely a way to position yourself like branding wise as a different series but if they are making this in like an establishing act in a new world of godzilla type toho verse cinematic universe sort of thing like they did in the showa era then it it makes sense but also like that is going to be the brand later on like you are going to do a sequel to this movie and godzilla is going to fight other monsters so um i i don't i don't think it's a bad choice i think given what appears to be the goals and the theming of this film from the limited information we have i think that that is a solid idea and i think it's a good one and i think it will perform really well but it is given the climate of the last four godzilla movies still a very weird choice to make a, a good one a, a fair one just odd in context the last thing i really want to say is about um the the eras and the, the the periodization of godzilla movies because they're this presents an interesting hiccup so traditionally as as far as the marketing in the west from toho themselves is concerned Godzilla is divided into four different periods or series. You have the Showa era or, or series, you have the Keisei series, the Millennium series, and the Reiwa series. Um, these names are bad and wrong, um, but they work for Western people because most Westerners are what's an I D dumb like dumb little idiots <laughs> I, don't, I guess I don't really care you know what I'm saying like I'm not trying to be mean about it but you know like people are dumb and like when people hear like you know Godzilla is a Japanese monster this is the Heisei series and, and they don't you know they don't really care other outside of like a very limited cone of Godzilla fights another monster it's like you know okay whatever it suffices it works but like it is linguistically wrong um so the showa era is a thing like it's a real thing it doesn't mean a series of godzilla movies showa comes from the the ningo which is like a japanese a traditional japanese way of naming different periods since the meiji era era they have been named after like a single emperor um post Cumus to their reign the emperor is named after the name of the era so when we say emperor showa we're referring to hirohito that sort of thing and um so the showa era is actually from late 1926 until very early uh 19 i believe it's december of 26 to january of 89 um I'm certain it's January, but I don't remember the exact date, but so that is the Showa era. So there are 16 Godzilla movies that came out during the Showa era. Two of them, uh, one of them doesn't appear to be part of the same timeline as, as the other. And then one of them is definitely intentionally not in the same timeline as the other. So All Monsters Attack was released in the Showa era could kind of i covered this in a, in another video i did but like return of godzilla because it, it was a reboot for the continuity and it ignores all the other movies except for the original and then all of the movies like the the first six movies released in the heisei era are all sequels to it then people just kind of generally lump those seven movies together as the heisei series this was very common in the 90s when there were only those movies in the Heisei era but I don't I don't know if um Japanese fans called it that in in the 90s but I do know that Westerners called it that in the 90s and then the Millennium series happened and that was very distinct because the first movie in that was called Godzilla 2000 Millennium and it was the Millennium Godzilla and it was released around the Millennium so it was the Millennium series 
and um, that was a good name and that worked. And then after that, they stopped making movies for 12 years. And then, so then you have this break and now we have this new series. And in Japan, according to Wikipedia, they would just call it the 2010 series. Um, it doesn't have a specific name per se, and, which is fine because it's a trilogy that is a series and then a single live action movie that isn't, um, which is not terrible. I mean, the Millennium series isn't really cohesive either, but it is cohesive in the fact that most of the movies are intended to be in different, like the first three were definitely in different universes and then they picked up with Tezuka and then did that and that was its own thing. And then they did Final Wars, which you know, I have a video about that. But then, so what do you call these new ones? And the thing is, not a single one of the last four Godzilla movies was released within the Reiwa era, um, which started on May 1st of 2019. So none of them are Reiwa movies, but they, Toho in English publicity materials refers to it as the Reiwa series because the assumption is if it continues, it'll continue into the Reiwa era. And therefore, like they took uh, Godzilla 84, which was released in the Showa era, in Showa 59, but then is lumped in with the versus, the other versus series, series movies because of its proximity and continuity ties to them, you would do the same thing with the last four Godzilla movies. And that's all well and good, except that now we're in a situation where this movie is rebooting the continuity once again, and it is going to be the first movie actually in the Reiwa era. So if you, there's two options, either publicity materials is going to continue to call this part of the Reiwa era, or what, as what I suspect will happen, this is going to be um, the thing that they were talking about. They're going to do their world of Godzilla situation. This is the foundation of that. This is going to be the beginning of a new series of maybe not even necessarily just Godzilla movies this time. And so you would need to call this a new thing, but now, now you need to come up with a new name for the next Godzilla movie and then whatever Toho makes after that, that is distinct from the Reiwa era, with the Reiwa era now not having a single movie that was actually released during the Reiwa era, and that's a little silly. Um, so I think the publicity material for this, if, if this is the direction that they're gonna go, is gonna have to change, um, which is just hilarious to me. Um, from my perspective, I I don't, like I'm not like a super weeaboo or anything, but I have like, you know, Godzilla's my life. So he is Japanese. So because of that, I do have some vague familiarity with Japanese history and culture and the language and this sort of thing. And um, it, that's just a natural curiosity to want to know things about other places and cultures. And also because it's directly tied into getting having a better understanding of Godzilla. And so um, I just, I don't feel comfortable saying Showa and Heisei in other contexts that that doesn't respect what those words actually mean. So um, when I say Showa era, I'm talking about the first 16 Godzilla movies. And when I say Heisei era, I'm talking about the second 16 Godzilla movies. When I say Reira era, I am talking about what I assume to be the next 16 Godzilla movies. I'm making a prediction that it happened twice in a row. So I think there will be 16 Godzilla movies re released within the Reiwa era. And then 16 and then it's, it's a it's a sample size of two. It's not a strong prediction, but you know, it's, it's just a fun parallel to think about. Um, I also have this prediction because see, I, the other thing is um, the Showa era isn't like the movies within the show era isn't a cohesive whole. So if I say the show a series, I'm not necessarily talking about every Godzilla movie that was released within the show era. Um, and I'm not, I'm also not necessarily talking about every Godzilla movie that was in that continuity up until return of Godzilla either. Really what I'm saying 
for the most part, is everything from the original film up until Destroy All Monsters. And then after that, there was this kind of break from, like, Destroy All Monsters was the first Godzilla movie intended to be the last. And then after that, the reason that they picked it up again, uh, it, it, it was the softest last Godzilla movie, but it was also, like, it was a last Godzilla movie, but they were always intending to pick up the series again. And regardless, it just was going to be in a different way. And so then they did, and it wasn't a different way. And it was through this new distribution method with these Champion Festival films. And tonally, the Champion Festival films are completely distinct from the 60s Godzilla movies. Well, from most of the 60s Godzilla movies. All Monsters Attack was in late December. It was December 20th, 1969. So, um, technically in the 60s but like champion festival is is totally distinct it the crew is almost completely distinct uh, almost there are a lot of people returning from the 60s but like it's it's a different production behind it you know this is after Tsuburaya's death this is like and there's a, a perfection book about it in the same way that there is a perfection book about the Versus series. So for a while, to me, it it seems a little bit disingenuous to lump the two together. But I mean, you can, you know, whatever. It's not like it's not a, there isn't publicity material marking this out as a different series. But to me, there are five series of Godzilla films. So you have the nine Golden Age Showa movies. You have the the six Champion Festival ones. You have the seven Versus series movies the six Millennium Series movies, and now the four 2010s movies, and probably the the one in counting um, World of Godzilla series. And um, I predicted <laughs> that this series would last for nine movies. And you know what? If you count the Hollywood movies, then... That's like, there's three of those, right? So that would be seven. So it's closer, but my prediction about that was way off. So I don't know. Call it a Rewa era movie if you want in the context of Toho's English publicity materials. You know, maybe they'll do that. I don't know. I just think it's really funny that they established, because it's not just one, it's, it's four <laughs> and it's, it's every movie in the Rewa era is not in the Rewa era. So just a weird observation. I don't really have a lot else to say about that. I'm really excited. I think Yamazaki is going to completely knock this out of the park. I did see one news article about that. I, I have no idea how connected it is to what people are actually saying in like fan circles about it. That, that said like people are quote unquote anxious about Yamazaki directing a Godzilla movie because he wouldn't be edgy enough. Which is like, my guy, <laughs> of course he's not. He He's Takashi Yamazaki. He does period pieces about families and anime adaptations. He does not do edgy Godzilla movies. Also, despite the, like, the heaviness, if it is about, um, the if it is about fat man and little boy then it could be a pretty heavy movie but also at the same time Yamazaki is very like he's directed more than just like live action adaptations like he's directed anime films um I believe he's done Doraemon and Lupin the Third so um I could be wrong about that but I'm, I'm almost certain he's done a Doraemon movie I'm, I'm not so sure about Lupin the Third, but I'm pretty sure he has. My point is, the guy can sell some family-friendly shit. And so, given that Shin Godzilla was a bureaucratic procedural about um, a Godzilla that itself was in pain, um, and then you have three anime movies in a row that are about how civilization itself is nihilistic on a fundamental level. Um, and you have your first, it's not explicit, but you do have your first sex scene in a Godzilla movie, and it's 
Like, do you put an outer god in the last one? Like, these movies... I, I mentioned this in that video I did about, about Godzilla Con Unity, the last one. Like, these movies, they're not really for kids, are they? Um, which is fine. I'm not a kid. Like, I, I enjoyed the hell out of them. Planet Eater, in particular, is my second favorite favorite Godzilla movie. So I'm not bothered by it. But, like, when when you have these really dire, nihilistic, like talky Godzilla movies being produced in Japan and then the alternative is these very flashy CGI laden Hollywood blockbuster things where he fights that are very very stupid make no sense at all have logic that makes children look smarter um and and like that's the other side of what you're doing with the franchise and theaters it kind of, it's like not a surprise that younger people are saying shit like my monster fights so I think it would be really cool to have Yamazaki do Godzilla and push it more into a family-friendly direction. I think maybe that's what the proper Godzilla movies need right now. I, after four movies in a row, probably time to like skew that direction a little bit. I mean, don't go full Megalon, but you know, it's, I'm not worried about that, of course, because if they are setting a part of it in the late 40s and they are definitely going to cover the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in some way. It's like you can't have that time period in a Godzilla movie and not have some part of it be about that. So it's it's not going to be without... And, and I, I don't think Yamazaki is going to pull a Megalon and have it be nothing but surface level story setup. I do think it is going to thematically be a part of the movie. So I'm not worried about the tone. I, I don't think it'll be a children's matinee film. But... It would, it would be cool to see something more amenable to the taste of a younger audience. So to the, the idea that you need an edgy Godzilla movie when the last, the very last Godzilla movie was straight up about fucking suicide, where Godzilla fights an outer god is baffling to me. If you want an edgy Godzilla movie, you have a Godzilla movie about suicide. What the hell do you want? Like, if if that's not going to please you, there is no level of edgy that's going to do it for you. Like, you have to take that or you are lying to yourself about your own wants. You know, it's like, it's like when those American-produced Silent Hill games came out and, like, the first one was just a straight up Silent Hill game, a carbon copy of the formula from the first four and people didn't like it. And then the next one came out and it was like an action game where you had to do dodge rolls and do combo attacks, like some sort of hack and slash game. And then people didn't like that. And then the next one came out and there was no combat at all and it was all psychological horror and then people didn't like that. And it's like, you don't like the one extreme. You don't like the other extreme. You don't like exactly the same thing. You're impossible to please. Like, you know, I, I don't like I don't like Homecoming because of the, the combat thing. I don't think that belongs in a Silent Hill game. But I like the one that's just like the first four. And I like the one that's even more less combat focused and more focused on the psychological aspect. I think those are good takes on Silent Hill. You know, in my opinion on those games is consistent with the fact that I do not like Homecoming. But there are so many people who are just like, I don't like this. I don't like that. I don't like anything. It's just like what like what the fuck are you talking about? Like can you hear yourself? An edgy Godzilla movie in 2023 directed by Yamazaki. Like what are you what is going on in your brain that is allowing for such a thought to even exist? So, I mean, again, I don't this is probably just some bullshit made up by this news article thing as far as I'm concerned like who, I didn't even get a, a look at the like io9 or Kotaku or some other buzz I don't know what the fuck it was website it was on so it's probably all just bullshit it's just the <laughs> the balls to suggest that a 2023 Yamazaki directed Godzilla movie needs to be edgy <laughs> I just there is no part of me that can take that seriously at all so that's 
I, I mostly wanted to share that because I think it's funny. Um, but yeah, I'm very excited about it. I'm extremely optimistic about it. I think this is the kind of movie that people have been wanting ever since uh, Toho chose to bring Tezuka back instead of Kaneko. Um, Kinec there were a lot of comparisons at the time that Kaneko was like the modern day Honda and Tezuka was the modern day Fukuda. That comparison is has like a grain of truth to it if you squint, but if you think about it for like five seconds, it completely falls apart. The Godzilla movie Kaneko made was an extremely challenging movie about the denial of Japanese war crimes, which was and really still is probably the strongest statement the series has ever made in its history. And um, I would love to see more Godzilla movies like that. But if you're talking about like a, a Showa 30s Honda-esque Godzilla movies where it's about capitalism bad and people working together because it's the right thing to do and like the world is a vampire but like people are inherently good and when push comes to shove, shove like at the end of the day the right things will win out that's that's like a Yamazaki thing like a period piece Showa era Godzilla movie in the aftermath of the horrors of nuclear war that has a focus on families with a documentary style focus on these characters. That is the most Honda thing we will have seen since, well, probably since Honda directed a Godzilla movie, honestly. I mean, I'm always gonna go on record and saying like, you know, the biggest piece of evidence against that old 2000s comparison to Tezuka and Fukuda is that Kaneko wasn't the one who directed Tokyo SOS. Tezuka directed Tokyo SOS. And Tokyo SOS is definitely the most Honda Godzilla movie that has existed since Honda directed Godzilla movies. I'm just saying I think Yamazaki is going to go even harder on that. So this is all good. I didn't, I didn't mean this to be nearly an hour. I thought I was just going to say some cool stuff. I was well, just thoughts that I <laughs> hype up my own thoughts as being cool. Like, I just wanted to say some stuff. I was thinking about this Godzilla movie since I was drunk, and, like, I did. I didn't think I would ramble on about it for nearly an hour, but here we are. Um, there's not going to be, like, a whole lot of, like, editing and, like, cute little pictures that pop up, because I'm just going to stretch that picture that Toho released of the big black on white G up throughout the whole 47 minutes so like listen to this as a podcast if you if anyone's listening to it at all which you know they probably won't be but you know it's <laughs> I don't really care I just wanted to upload this to get my thoughts like out about it because I didn't want to have to sit down and write shit while I was drunk I'd rather just say it it's easier for me to talk so that's the end of it I'll stop belaboring the point um Okay, actually, I lied. There is something else I forgot that I wanted to mention. Um, I have a theory. I have a prediction. And this time it's not like a stupid thing based on periodization. It's it's uh, based on the text, right? So do you remember in uh, Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah where they feed Godzilla the nuclear sub without realizing, you know, because they think that they're in a movie, they think that time travel works the way that it works in movies. And so they're like, oh, well, the Futurians came back. And even though we remember Godzilla existing, we, we're going to assume that that means he was erased from time somehow. And then they're like, they send the sub and then, and then they realize too late. They're like, oh shit, we actually just made him even more powerful. So the, the justification they give for that in the movie is that it's modern nuclear energy that powers Godzilla and also it's like a double dose so he's double dipping so um that it basically explains that the reason Godzilla was 100 meters tall is because it's modern nuclear energy and retroactively explains that the reason he was 80 meters tall in the 80s was because of the reason he mutated into Godzilla in the first place was because a nuclear sub that sank in the late 1970s which means that that, again, is a more modern form of radioactivity or nuclear materials or, you know, whatever kind of nonsense science these movies have going on. 
But so that's the that's the thing that they established that more modern forms of nuclear stuff create bigger Godzillas, uh, which so the original Godzilla was the product of the hydrogen bomb, um, which was tested on on the Bikini Atoll in the Castle Bravo test. So that Godzilla was 50 meters. And then the the one made in the 70s with, with newer stuff was bigger. So there is a distinction between the bombs Fat Man and Little Boy, the bombs that were used offensively in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Those were not hydrogen bombs. Those were an earlier version of a nuclear weapon. The the hydrogen bomb has never been used defensively. So the the nuclear test, um, the Castle Bravo test that created the original Godzilla was actually a much, a significantly more powerful weapon than the ones actually used in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, which means if we take that logic and make it consistent, my prediction is that this Godzilla movie rather than having this like pissing contest with the Hollywood Godzilla seeing who can be the tallest, I think it's actually going to be the first time Godzilla gets smaller. I think it's going to be a a uh, shorter version of Godzilla if it's going to be created by these nuclear weapons, the fat man and little boy. I, I'm not going to make a prediction on how big he is. I think somewhere between 25 to 40 meters would be a good guess something like that but yeah i just want i just wanted to add that in there i think it's if it's going to be an earlier pre-hydrogen bomb version of a nuclear weapon i think it's going to be a smaller godzilla so yeah um that's it i'm done it's officially over an hour this is officially a podcast at this point you know whatever but uh yeah that's what i wanted to say so if anyone did listen you know thanks for listening that's cool and all but you know, you're, you're not, you don't have to I mean, just click off if this is boring. But of course, you've already done that if you do think this. So that's, there is no point in me saying, okay, I'm just going to shut up now. So until next time, this is going to be fun. Robots, who are the good guys? We're the good guy robots as opposed to the evil guy robots. All of us who are robots, who are also the, also in addition to being robots and being the good guys, all of us who are both of those things, and in addition to those other two things, can transform into cars. So if you're, a, say, a robot that is a good guy and is a robot, but transforms into like, I don't know, a dinosaur or something, that's very cool. You're, you're very much cooler than us, but we're not addressing you necessarily in, in, in this scenario. Um, certainly if we were going to say something like uh, Autobots who can also assume the shape of dinosaurs, do that and then stomp away we wouldn't be including you but in this instance we're saying only the robots who are robots who are the good guys and also who can turn into cars and we when we do that we very much look like cars but it is important to remember that these are not cars but rather robots who simply look like cars because of their natural ability to change their shape into the shape of other things that in this specific situation are cars Anyone else? All of those robots who, who are all of those things that I just stated, if that's applicable to you, what I'm going to need you to do right now is do what I've requested, turn yourself into that car shape that you are able to assume, and after you've done that, what we're going to do is we're all going to drive, and we're going to drive off to Mally's house, and we're going to throw her a kick-ass birthday party because it's her birthday. And the yellow balloon is in the sky, and which means it's time to go outside. It's my birthday. And now I'm here, and I'm the other one, and I live with him in this funny house. And every day we come outside and do some things that are outside. It's my, bir it's my birthday again. <clears throat> and, and I'm here, and I'm also here, and I live with these other guys in this funny house. And every morning we sing this song. Every, okay, I'm done. <laughs>